on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all his peoples. Prophet Isaiah, speaking to us uh, very much of the love of God and of heaven. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. On that day, it will be said, indeed, this is our God. We looked to him and he saved us. This is the Lord to whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he saved us. You know, Father George, uh, fairly early in his life, uh, met the Lord, met God. And it was a, a moment for him to really begin to think about, okay, Lord, we're in relationship now. Let me tell you about the Revolutionary War. <laughs> As you can tell, this is not going to be a homily in which I make him a saint. <laughs> but hopefully it will be a homily in which we bless his life uh, in a very real way. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, takes the belief in God another step. And he says, none of us lives for ourselves. None of us dies for ourselves. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Then, so then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. And Father George truly believed that. He belonged to Christ. And that's actually the invitation to each of us. And it's a time for us to do really a recommitment during this Eucharist. Each of us, in a very special way, called into that special love relationship. In a very special way, as we celebrate the sacraments as priests, uh, and I've shared this with the priests before, but you know, when we're in the seminary, we really don't realize what we're walking into. And for those of you that are married, by the way, I suspect it's also true. Okay, it's also true. Uh, I had a couple that was at the uh, marriage. Uh, anniversary celebration, celebrating 75 years of marriage, I gave them a doctorate in forgiveness. <laughs> um, but Father George, as he was ordained June 13th, uh, it was a moment for him to begin a very special relationship with Jesus Christ as his priest. And each of the assignments that he had were moments in which he both encountered the body of Christ, but he also encountered Jesus in the body of Christ, in the Eucharist. 54 years of priesthood. Have to wonder how many thousands of masses that is. Really wonderful gift. How many babies he held that he baptized, how many couples he witnessed the weddings, how many people he anointed with the anointing of the sick, how many people he, can, he prepared for confirmation, how many people that he walked with in faith. In a very real way, uh, his faith and his belief in Jesus Christ was really at the center of his life, aside from watching Fox News, <laughs> and also aside from talking about history. When I first met Father George some years ago, when I first became your bishop, uh, 
Nobody told me not to ask a question about history. <laughs> An hour and a half later, <laughs> he finished talking. Actually, he didn't finish talking. I had to leave. <laughs> There was a gentleness about Father George. There was a, a spirit of love that you met every time you met him. Uh, there was a real sense that he really did love God. And he really did want to share the love of God, especially. Which, uh, in a very real way, uh, we speak about in the gospel today and it's kind of the continuation of relationship with Jesus Christ and he says to us I am the living bread that came down from heaven whoever eats this bread will live forever the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world normally I would do a giant wow at this moment but I'm gonna have mercy on you and I will not. But that's actually became the center of Father George's life as a priest. It was his belief that at this altar, or all the altars he celebrated at, that the living bread came down from heaven and that Jesus gave us his body and blood and gives us his body and blood and we celebrate that now and that's actually what draws us together around this altar celebrating his life but we in a very special way come to receive the body and blood of Christ Jesus giving himself to each of us this is the bread that came down from heaven unlike your ancestors who ate and still died whoever eats this bread will live forever it's another wild moment, by the way. I don't know if I can hold it. I mean, really, I mean, it's just fantastic. Now, celebrating with Mass with Father George was also fun. Uh, and I mean that in a good way. I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, and there's a a photo that uh, Juliana, our, one of our communication folks, found of Father George and I con celebrating Mass, or he was con celebrating with me, celebrating Mass. We're seated together at uh, St. Mary's in Gaucher. And uh, in that moment, one of the little girls, about four years old, came skipping down the main aisle. And both of us saw her. And the smile on his face and the smile on my face was something to behold. And there was a, sitting in the front row, there was a, um, a special needs person. And so the little girl did a little doot, 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 hi to the special needs person and the special needs person just brightens. And of course that caused me to also go doot, doot, doot. <laughs> And then she went, Father George, of course, is seeing all of this, and she went flying down the, the aisle, skipping down the aisle, and an arm appeared from nowhere and grabbed her and pulled her into the pew. You know, in many ways, to have that kind of joy of the little girl skipping down the aisle, the aisle to approach Jesus. That's what Jesus invites us to in the Eucharist. And while I'm not asking you to do that for Holy Communion today, okay, <laughs> that is the spirit of it. And it's the spirit that really, I think, in some ways defined Father George. Because he was open to moments like that. And his smile was a smile that went all the way across the church. All the way across the church. Uh, and I couldn't help but smile with him.
as we celebrate his life in this particular Eucharist, we also pray for you, the family, that God's peace may be yours, because it is a loss. It's a loss for us, too. Uh, we, we loved him, too. That's why we have so many priests and so many deacons here, and our folks, the people. But we also trust that the, the faith that Father George first encountered God, as Isaiah has said to us, God will provide for all his people. And God has done that, as St. Paul told us, in Jesus Christ. For all of us who live with Christ and die with Christ, will be with the Lord as we celebrate this Eucharist for him. Let's remember that Jesus is our living bread that comes down from heaven and that whoever of us eats the, this special bread will live forever. For Jesus says to us, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Amen. Amen.